All right, friends, we back with another video again on Jason Blaha, the strength and fitness channel. Yes, the gym lifting, recruiting, lifting slave himself. Wow, look at this pose. He looks fabulous. Oh, yes. Clean shaven head and chest. <laughs> All right, let's review this video, man. I can't wait to have a laugh. The theory on why volume and muscle growth studies show massive contradictions. Mm. The theory, oh, so it's a theory on why volume and muscle growth. So muscle growth is a, is a, is a theory too, right? Okay, so volume and muscle growth, whatever. Studies show massive contradictions. The volume, okay. Let's see what he has to say. Hey everybody, I have a hypothesis I would kind of like to share with everyone and it has to do with why we see this disparity in volume studies regarding hypertrophy. Uh, and one of the things that I've noticed, we see it in certain circles. In other words, you see certain circles of researchers, particularly, uh, you know, Dr. Brad, you see his circle and then you see the way that they train and yet they get all these studies showing these minor improvements in hypertrophy from doing extremely high volumes of training and yet historically when you go back and look at other studies remember what i told you before in my videos everything works in the beginning and then it stops working yes well some things may go a little bit longer and some things are let shorter. It all depends, but they'll all stop working. We find when sets are taken to failure, relatively low amounts of volumes produce extremely robust hypertrophy, in some cases exceeding more than about 10 sets. Yes, we're going to try to go extreme volumes to get over the body's defenses called adaptation. The body's defenses, how does the body defend itself from you trying to destroy it with fucking poison, alcohol, fake diets, domesticating it, doing all this weird shit to it, stressing the shit out of it, going to factories, lifting shit all day. Man, like physical labor all day, six, eight hours a day, man. <laughs> Stupid shit like that. How does it defend itself? Easy, it adapts. So... Uh, Jason Blaha is like, well, we're going to force it. We're going to do high volume to get this, to, to eke out more, uh, eke out more, uh, try to eke out an adaptation, possibly to him in his head, eke out an adaptation. I'm not saying that's wrong to try to eke out an adaptation. But like I said, it's adapted. So how much more, look, how much more adaptations can you get out of something that's adapted? Get it? See what I mean? Everything works in the beginning and then it stops working. Why? Because it's adapted. That's the whole point. They're defense mechanisms. Steroids work in the beginning. Why don't they work again with the same dosages? Well, why do I have to inject higher dosages? Because it adapted. Because it's protecting itself. Get it? Why doesn't the alcohol work anymore? I keep downing more and more bottles. I have to spend more money because it's adapted. It's protecting itself. But you are poisoning it to the to the to the extreme where it's gonna die, gonna kill that body. Man, even your marijuana is not working anymore. Not even the cigarettes. That's why people are like chain smokers, dude. Like, come on, think about it, you know? You've got a brain out there. It's kind of obvious. It's adapted. It's a, it's a defense mechanism. When you start seeing reduced... Why don't you build muscle? Because it's defending itself from what? From getting damaged and building any more muscles. Hypertrophy. And here's, here's the point with that. When you see these studies to where they do these things, and you'll be like, well, they did six sets and... Yeah. Discover... Six sets and these... Trained lifters all got bigger and stronger doing six sets to failure on squats or... Okay, what's he talking about they got bigger and stronger? Did they get bigger? How big did they get? Could you measure? Could you physically see it? Or did they just gain like one or two pounds and you couldn't really see it? It's kind of like, you know, it's around, lingering around. He says bigger. What kind of bigger? Could you measure it? Could you see it visually? Jesus or hip thrust or whatever it was that week, right? So you see that and go, well, that's... Can you get, can you get better at lifting a weight and not, get, and not get big and strong? Yeah, you could get better at lifting a heavy weight. 
your lifts can go up and your body not get big and strong. Do you understand me? What's the difference? Because, oh man, fuck. Do we have to talk about this again? Concentric exercise is not associated with muscle damage. Eccentric is, okay? So what does concentric do? That's the up force, right? That is a force production. You're moving weight in real time against what? Against gravity, get it? And so your body is going to calibrate itself by doing what? By doing what? Proliferating these motor units through the, through the muscle fibers. And what else? These androgen receptors, they'll accumulate for what? What purpose? For more for, for maximum force production. Okay. What does that have to do with, with getting big and strong? Nothing. That has nothing to do with getting big and strong. How do you get big and strong? Easy. You, you get an adaptation through muscle damage. That's how you do it. But that is very complex. It's very difficult. And it takes a lot of work. See what I mean? How do you get good at lifting weights? Keep lifting them. Da. Keep lifting them forever. Get it? Keep practice adding. Keep practicing at them. That's how. See what I mean? It isn't based on it isn't based on natural strength. Now, if you want to build natural strength, lifting strength and and get bigger and stronger, what do you need to do? You need to focus on eccentric exercises cause get an adaptation in that exercise and then what else you need to do you need to be in an anabolic growth state you need to eat to be in an anabolic growth state so your nitrogen balance is even get it jesus you need to be in a positive nitrogen balance if you're not then you're not gonna grow it's really simple even if you did get damaged you'll get an apoptosis and you'll lose muscle you'll shrink interesting you know they their maxes went up and they all saw muscle growth, significant muscle growth, even in an eight or a 10 week period on MRIs and double blind studies. He, see, they, they all saw significant muscle growth. You know where it was seen? On MRIs and these fucking stupid studies. But guess what? It could not be visually seen. It could only be seen through a CT scan. Holy shit, dude. Okay. All right, so you have that. And then yet you'll see these other studies where these very high volumes produce great results. Well, here's the thing that I found, and, and I think most... Very high volumes produce great results. Yeah, it can produce a, an adaptation. And then what when it stops working? And then what? What happens then? You're adapted now. It's adapted to this, this, this so-called, I'm going to do it to the end. <sighs> Man. What do you do now? Coaches and trainers out there will admit this. How often have you seen extremely high volumes cause people to completely stop? The question you want to ask this asshole is, when it stops working, what do you do then? Blah, when it stops working, what do you do? Keep doing it? Get it? Lift in failure hell? Right. So this is why it, it becomes... Uh, frustrating when we see this conflicting data and we need to keep in mind they, these are conflicting circles it's certain circles of researchers are getting consistently different results okay and that's important in this context and and i think that the thing that we're seeing here and i'm not denying that their data is oftentimes showing more muscle growth i want to be clear on that i am not saying that their data itself is necessarily incorrect Man, how hard is bodybuilding to understand? Like, he keeps talking about scientists and their data and all this and whatever. Science already tells you how do you how do you get it how do you get muscles to grow through what an adaptation? Get it? What is an adaptation associated with muscle damage? It tells you in science. Hey, eh? an adaptation is is muscle damage. Get it? Yeah. Now, when muscles are adapted, are they getting damaged? No. Are they, are they growing if they're adapted? No. Get it? They only ever grow what? In an adaptation. See what I'm trying to explain to you? And then science tells you protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to build those muscles. To see that mass visually. 
visually, not on a CT scan like him. Get it? Or these other scans or whatever the fuck he's talking about. Visually, to see it. Protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown. No, I know people who've called right. Brad and, and Co out for Holy shit. the way that they collect data. I've seen Lyle McDonald call them out on that. Be like, yeah, hey, you didn't even double blind the, the Who cares? Who are these fake experts? Research. Like you as the, the head researcher knew what groups you were looking at the MRIs on in the MRI. You don't need MRIs, bro. I don't wanna listen. People are not going to the gym trying to build muscle so they can see it in an MRI. Blah, get it? They're trying to see it visually, visually. They're trying to see it visually. They don't want to see it on a CT scan or an MRI to find out whether they built any muscle, okay? Jesus. Eyes can be definitely subjective. I've seen that, that call out. I don't necessarily think we need to go that far. You know, I'm going to take them at face value and say that there's not an, an, an ethical concern with the data collection, uh, that maybe they really are collecting good data, okay? Even though... We, man, science has already tells you how to build muscle, what builds it. It tells you everything in PubMed and NCBI. You don't need to look at these studies, guy, get it? My own personal experience says there's no way it's even possible uh, just because of, of what I've observed. I have watched lifters regress from trying to do these really high volumes. It started exceeding 20 sets a week. I have seen the lifters who stalled as novices and could not get any bigger or stronger, didn't look like they lifted, and had extremely mediocre lifts even after a year of training. Yeah, you want to know why? Because they all... They were all adapted, like it says in science. It tells you that the damage goes down. Remember the reports I used to read? It tells you, it tells you they come in and they get this damage in the beginning and then what happens? It starts to de decrease and then it goes away. Why is that? Repeat about effect. It's an adaptation process and you're adapted. Get it? And so what do you need to do? Get in your adaptation. I'm talking lifts that they should have passed in three or four months, just in terms of what they could do on, on basic compound movements. And people say, well, if we're chasing size, not strength. Yeah, but there's a size strength correlation. I would agree with what he says right there. There's a size strength correlation, definitely. Oh, we're, we're not chasing size, we're chasing strength. What are you talking about? You mean you're chasing being good at lifting weights is not, is not making you physically stronger? Well, this, this same set of researchers found that they could absolutely tell powerlifters maxes from doing a DEXA scan. Okay? So they, they absolutely determined that from a DEXA scan, they could estimate a powerlifter or bodybuilder's max squat within 10% margin of error. Wow, they have to look at DEXA scans, man. Thank God. I don't have to look at a DEXA scan. I can see the amount of muscle fibers that I built. The amount of muscle fibers... I have built because they're visual. I can see them visually, you understand me? And most people never take me, when I'm not on a carbohydrate diet at all, I'm a carnivore diet. When I tell them I weigh 250 pounds, they tell me, nah, you don't weigh 250. You don't look like 250. I never exactly ask them how much they think I weigh, but they say, you don't look 250. What do I look like? I stand on the scale and they're like, holy shit, you weigh a lot. Even my doctor's like, you weigh a lot. Yet I still look big. I'm big. My clothes. I'm still wet. I'm still wearing like XL shirts and triple XL. See what I mean? My waist is always around a 35, 34 waist. I'm wearing like jeans, 35 waist or whatever. So um, I don't know, man. Like it's, <laughs> and they're tight around the legs. The jeans are usually tight around my legs. See my calves. Depends what style it is. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know what people people think. They don't understand, you know, they don't understand bodybuilding whatsoever. They don't know about density, density and mass, mass, density. They don't, they don't know any of these things. I don't, I don't know what planet pe this guy's on, man. Jesus. Over and over and over repeatedly from math they came up with all the DEXA scans. Okay, so they could DEXA scan one and then determine what they could squat. Uh, that's, that's... Uh... The government's plan for a digital... ...and then determine what they could squat. Uh, that's that's uh, 
kind of go in the other direction saying, no, you can't fully separate those two. So, no, you're not going to use that excuse there. But I'm talking extremely mediocre lifts. And, and I mean, people who've been training more than... Mediocre lifts? I don't understand. What, do you, what, is he, what is he talking about? Man, I'm confused. Can somebody explain? A year who can't bench one plate per side for five plus reps. Okay, that's what I mean. Oh, that's what you mean. Is it based on a, a, a practiced strength, Laha? Somebody's practiced strength, these domestic humans practice strength, or, or or their natural strength. They can't they can't bench two plates on each side. Because I can tell you right now, I know a lot of ectomorphs, they can't bench two plates on each side, 45 pound plates, okay? All right. And I'm talking non practiced. By mediocre lifts. And that if they didn't have a spotter, they tried to even go for five reps at 135. That bar's going to sit on their chest before they hit the fifth rep. He's the kind of guy that's going to try to convince you that powerlifting is a carryover to arm wrestling. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, okay. Happen. Um, so we, here's what I'm going to say. Have you guys looked at any of the social media of these various coaches? They don't train anywhere near failure. And when they're asked about it, they'll say, well, that was failure for me. They have five or six reps in reserve. Like, like do you think that, that uh, what's his face? Um, <clears throat> Le Levon Sangashvili. Do you think he gives a shit that uh, um, Larry Wheels could bench press more than him? And even for reps? Do you think he gives a shit when he puts his arm on the table for arm wrestling? Do you think he gives a shit how much Larry Wheels could deadlift off the floor? Or how much he could press or whatever the fuck he's doing there, bench pressing? Do you think Sangashvili gives a shit about Larry Wheels? He's going to tear Larry Wheels' arm right off and feed it to him. He's going to tear off his 900-pound deadlift arm and tear it off and feed it to him like the weak little puppy he is. You understand me? You want to know why? Because Sangashvili... Has, has more muscle than him. He's bigger, and therefore he's stronger. There's more muscle there, get it? He's physically stronger than Larry Wheels. Larry Wheels is good at practiced, practicing lifting weights off the floor and power lifting, but Sangashvili is bigger than him physically, and therefore he's stronger than him, and will always rip off his arm and feed it to him like the weak puppy he is. Okay, dude, and I don't give a shit what anybody says. Their, 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 sets, their reps don't even slow down. Okay, because you guys see me hit failure in some of the stuff in these, a couple of these are failure. Like I get to the bottom and the weight just sticks. That's it, I'm done. Like these tricep extensions are about one rep from failure, right? I'm grinding a little through that last rep. You don't see any grinding reps. You don't even see their face training. They're just doing a casual set. And uh, personally, small people are weak. This guy is small. He weighs, I don't know, 180 pounds or something. He's a liar about his weight, 200 pounds. But even if he is 200, he's 200 pounds. He's weak. Laha weighs 200 pounds. He's weak. I don't give a shit how much he could lift off the floor with his steroids or press or whatever the fuck he's doing. He weighs 200 pounds. He's weak. He's weak because he doesn't carry any physical, physical strength. He's weak. I don't give a shit. Well, never changes. No real grind. No real strength. Now, this deadlift would fall in that category. So this is a perfect example, right? This is not within one rep of failure. This is just doing an easy triple of 500 because I hadn't deadlifted in a few weeks and just wanted to get back in the group. This is an example of that level of training. This is not particularly difficult, right? I could have done more reps, even though it's a 500-pound deadlift and I'm almost 50 years old. All right. Oh, he, he's so proud of that. Oh, look, I can always do it for reps, 500-pound deadlift. Oh, my God. Oh, Christ, man. <laughs> back over to the point but this is an example of failure but you don't see them doing that so here's the thing if the researchers themselves in their own i mean look how weak his arms are he could barely curl like i don't know 15 pounds on each side give me a break in training do not know how to get a close proximity to failure 
And we need to be clear, the research shows that people in general, that 70% of lifters can't do it. Even experienced lifters, they're not able to judge like anything beyond two reps in reserve, right? Their two reps in reserve could be five or six, right? Now right here, this is because it got really hard, so I had to grind and so I did a slow eccentric and then I just, it stuck at the bottom. I couldn't do another rep, that was failure, okay? That's what we mean. If they can't do that and they train that way, and that's how they're, they're doing their, if they're holding their test subjects to the same standards of the lifts that they upload on social media, they may be having their, the people in the studies four or five reps in reserve. Well, no wonder 10 sets doesn't produce a very robust training response. When you see other studies where five to 10, even in, in trained lifters done to failure, always produces, always produces a measurable training response that produces measurable hypertrophy every time. Study after study after study for decades. Oh, it they all get bigger. It does, does it? Okay. If you say so, and these if you say so blah. Huh? Cases they're like, do 20 sets produce more? 30 sets produced more. So sets produce growth, see? He's, he's, again, what is, how do, how do muscles, how do you, how do you, how do muscles grow? Like, how do they, how do you get, like, how do muscles, how do you build muscles through what? An adaptation process. What is adaptation? What does science say? What is an adaptation? Muscle damage. Okay. What's he telling you? What's, and then it says protein synthesis succeeds this breakdown. That's how muscles grow. Okay. What's he telling you? Sets sets are going to build a muscle if you do 10 sets you're going to build more muscles what what well yeah if everything's five reps from failure no wonder no wonder that's you're getting but they're calling it sets to failure sets to to uh, one or two reps in reserve when in reality based on what you're seeing in their stuff it's probably five and it might take people 10 sets to even accumulate enough fatigue to get a, a good work set. So they might be doing eight or nine sets of junk volume that are really just warm ups that are accumulating enough fatigue that over time they start getting to muscle growth. So in that case, what fatigue and then they start getting muscle growth. He's making this shit up, man. Does he not understand that muscles get built through an adaptation process? What the hell is he talking about? Of course, this is why you're seeing these very high volumes. It's because these people themselves don't. Yes, why are we seeing these high volumes? Because people are stupid like you? Train hard. Therefore, they're holding the test subjects to a different standard and they're not training hard. And if that's what- Those are experiments, you asshole. Listen, you dummy. Those are experiments they're doing. They already know what builds muscles. They're just doing an experiment to see what the outcome will be in this and that. Did they, did, did you know what type of muscle they built? Is it sarcoplasmic? Is it myofibular? What is it? Fake, real? What, what type of muscle? What's going on there? What's getting built there exactly? Was it through the adaptation process? Did they explain to you in the experiment? Are you going to explain to the people what it was? Man, are you that stupid? Listen, are people that stupid out there to believe what this guy is fucking pushing? This bullshit? This is garbage. You understand me? This is baloney. This is fake science. He has no proof, nothing. He doesn't, he's just making up a bunch of stuff, okay? But you're measuring unhard training, then of course it, take, it takes really high volumes. What? To, to elicit a large amount of muscle growth. But it takes high volumes to el elicit a large amount of muscle growth. So because I'm still eating my bagels, right? My bagel diet, my, uh, what is it? What does he eat? I don't know, tofu and spaghetti diet and the same three meals a day. I just have to go high volume and then the muscles will grow. So I don't have to, I don't really have to be in an anabolic growth state, even though that's what makes muscles grow. I don't have to eat. I don't have to eat guys. See? I just, uh, I don't have to eat. I just, I just have to go, I just have to do to failure, maximum failure to the end and uh, high volume failure, whatever. And then the muscles will be forced to grow <laughs> out of thin air. Yes. Holy mackerel, man. This is the dumbest shit I ever heard. That's why all you people are failing out there.
problem is in the methodology, okay? That if they had done sets to failure, they probably would have been able to do dramatically less and get the exact same amount of muscle growth. All right, guys. See, you're going to get muscle growth. Weight's got magic powers. Look at Blaha. How's that working for him? A lot of talk, but I don't see anything. Lots of talking, but I don't see anything. That's really all I have to say. Or should I say he's speaking, but the body's, the body's not talking. <laughs> it's not doing any talking. Not today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time. Yes, it's been so informative that I almost lost a few IQ points. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Don't you think about that? Like, subscribe, support the channel. See you in the next video. That was just ridiculous. Sorry for the interruption in the video. Sometimes I get these interruptions. See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.